it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe if you're also back welcome back thank you so much for joining me again and if you're one of those people that sing along with me with the I'm back I love you I always see you guys comment that you sing along with me and I love that like I love that we have that connection so Welcome back to the channel, but if you're new and maybe you want to join in on the fun, please consider subscribing. We talk about makeup and all things beauty. We have a good time here on this channel. And I'm about to try out some new makeup with you guys because I just picked up, okay? I picked up the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 palette. Oh my god, I was so excited about this palette. I did a shopping block, I will link it over here. And this was the first palette I talked about and I'm like, I'm getting it. Do not play with me. The minute it launches in store, I'm getting it. So that's exactly what I did. It's an all matte palette, two cream eyeshadows. It's beautiful. I'm using it in this video because why not like, I love an all matte look. I love a neutral palette. I love an all matte palette. So I'm all over it, right? I also have a new Merit Solo eyeshadow. These are their cream eyeshadow pots. Yeah, I got a shade from this that I'm trying out, and I will give you my thoughts because I did swatch these in store. I saw the shades, so I'm going to give you my thoughts on this. I'm also using the new Dior, it's not new, new to me. This is the Capture Total Cell Energy Super Potent Serum Foundation. Who say that five times fast. Somebody mentioned this to me in the comments. They wanted me to try it out, so I did. So I'm testing it out in this video. I did try a new lipstick from YSL and also a new moisturizer from Kiehl's. So if you want to just chat with me, and I'm going to warn you right now, this video kind of takes a turn a little bit in the middle of the video. So it's going to be a little bit of a deeper topic, all right? It deals with death and passing away. So just be mindful of that. I'm, I'm giving you a heads up. So if that's triggering for you, just, just be aware that we're going to get into that. There's kind of a shift in the video because I didn't expect to talk about it, you know, during the video. So heads up, that's coming. But if you want to see how I accomplish this look, then let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, guys. So as usual, we're starting off with a clean freshly washed face i did fill in my eyebrows with my make beauty eyebrow pencil as well as my patrick ta pencil because you know we do the most with our brows i also went in with my nars soft matte complete concealer yes i'm finally getting the name right and the shade chestnut just under my brows to clean it up because we will be going in with a cream eyeshadow from merit as i mentioned in the intro so I didn't put anything else on my lids other than my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion because you know, you know, oily eyelids. All right, moisturizer. Let's start out with this one from Kiehl's. This is their Super Multi-Corrective Soft Cream, which they describe as a summertime moisturizer, which I'm all on board. If you say summertime, that means it's lightweight. So it says visibly firms, lifts, smooth skin's texture, boosts radiance, improves elasticity, reduces lines and wrinkles, and even skin tone. And this is a lightweight cream that is perfect for summer-proof makeup and it minimizes excess oil for a shine-free finish. Doesn't that sound exactly like what I need? I have oily skin and I'm always looking for a lightweight moisturizer because I still want to apply a moisturizer, you know? It feels good on the skin, you know? I don't want to leave my skin just hanging out on its own so it can overproduce oil because essentially that's what happens. If my skin is too dry, which happens after I wash, right? It then starts overproducing sebum and that's the reason I get oily. So going in with a lightweight moisturizer just to add some moisture back helps to prevent my skin from like doing the most, the absolute most. Ooh, this feels so comfortable. So it's not like a water-based gel cream. It feels very silky and slippery but it doesn't feel heavy. You know those heavy moisturizers that you can apply that just feel way too emollient, they feel way too thick? This almost feels exactly as it's described, a soft cream. Cause it's a cream, it's not a gel, but it's a thinner, like lighter weight cream. It is really nice. Oh my God, 
All right, I like that. So we're gonna let that sit on the skin. That feels good. It has a light scent to it as well. It doesn't say it's fragrance free. Let's look at the ingredients. Do you all like my headband? I've been trying to get into headbands and it's just, I don't know if it's just not my style or it's my head shape, whatever it is, I don't feel like headbands suit me at all. I don't want to peel back the thing on the bottom to get the ingredients, so I'm going on the Sephora website. Oh my god, this is $76 for this size. There's a mega size too that is how much? Let me see how much, ooh, $95. That is a lot, and I take it for granted because things are sent to me, so you know, you're just applying it, you're like, oh yeah, this feels nice, but it's $76 hairs. But I'm glad I'm checking the price because this is $76. Let's look at the ingredients to be sure like it's worth it. So highlighted ingredients, we have Proxylane GX, which restores visible firmness to skin adenosine, which is known to improve skin's elasticity, and then caproloyl glycine, which visibly reduces excess oil and restores balance to skin. Okay, it's vegan, and it's saying that there was a 12-week consumer study, 99% felt improved texture, 98% saw boosted radiance, and 96% felt firmer skin. Okay, so... Seems like it's like a good little cream. It has four and a half stars on Sephora. So that means people are seeing like great results from this. That is good news. That is always good news to see. It's water-based and let's see, I'm looking for any fragrance. I don't see any fragrance specifically that's jumping out. We have glycerin and niacinamide. Water is the main ingredient. Squalene, that's a great ingredient. All right now, and all like the ingredients that they highlighted are higher up in the ingredient list. So that is good to see. And it's not like a dimethicone packed moisturizer. Okay, so maybe the price point is worth it. I don't know, but I know that it feels very nice on the skin. And I've used it a couple of times before and I did enjoy it and I do feel like it's lightweight. All right, so enough of that. That was sent to me. I mentioned that, right? But I just wanted to reiterate, which is why I didn't know the price. Anyway, let's move on to the eyes. Hi, hi. So what about the headband? It's <laughs> like, I feel like, I just gotta I just gotta lean into it but I feel like my fashion sense doesn't really match the headband thing because headbands are kind of cutesy and I'm not cutesy and girly I, at least I don't think so anyway I picked up this new Merit um, solo eyeshadow in the shade Vachetta I don't know. Let's look at what this is. So this is the Solo Shadow Cream to Powder Soft Matte Eyeshadow from Merit. Each of them retail for $24. They come in these little pots. And it's it's a very difficult pot to open, okay? Because it's like the cap. They have a, a little secure mechanism that clicks in place. And that's actually a good design for a cream eyeshadow because you don't want it to dry out over time. And from what I can tell, this is a dryer formula. So like I said, I got the shade Vachetta, which is like, a, let me see what they describe it as, a warm beige. Yeah, yeah, it's a warm beige. So this is a cream formula with a matte finish. It's talc-free cream to powder that's easy to use and gives a soft matte wash of color for all day wear. Okay, let's try it out. So I'm just gonna pick it up on my Sephora Pro Concealer 71 brush. I swatched these in store so, you know, I could get a feel for them before I picked them up. And I was almost, okay, come in, yeah, I was almost going to get some additional shades. I was going to get the dark brown and then they have this olive green looking one. But as I swatched it on my hand, I wasn't sure about the formula. This sets down quickly. So if you're going to try them out, apply one eye at a time. It doesn't seem to be an issue right now applying it on my eyelids. It's not dragging or tugging, which is what I was really afraid of, that it was going to be a dry formula. But it feels pretty smooth. It's gliding over the skin pretty nicely. And then it's kind of, let me see. 
it didn't set down completely on this side yet. Yeah, it did set down now. So you want to move quickly like I was mentioning. Oh, I should have just blended this one out. Okay, we're fine because it's like a skin tone shade. So it sets down pretty quickly. I think these are great for like one and done shadows. You know, this is a good color for my skin tone. All right, the thing about it is, right, when I apply, so, okay, click it. Oh my God, very difficult to close and open. I don't know why. I think because the cap is so slender, the way you have to grab it, you know, it's it can get a little tricky. But again, a good thing because you want the cap to be really secure. So the thing, I hold on, my mom's calling me. Hello? Hey. Mm -hmm. All right, so my mom just called me with bad news and I feel like I don't know do I want to tell you guys I don't want to tell you guys because I don't want the comments, you know like Please, please, please if I say this to you just leave it at surface level. I'm, I'm begging you. Okay, just leave it at the surface but my father just passed away and See, I know, I know, right? Sounds terrible. All right, so he just passed away, and I had anticipated it because he's been sick for, well, not even that long, to be honest. He just deteriorated really quickly, and we don't know, like, what it is. They might do an autopsy, I don't know. But I'm grabbing the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 palette, the new palette from Patrick Ta. I know, I dropped that bombshell on you, and now I'm like, here, look at this eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna I'm gonna fill you in but let's just look at the eyes. I know it's weird It's a weird segue, but please just bear with me. Okay, so here's the new palette It's an all matte eyeshadow. Well, not all matte but 10 matte eyeshadows with two creams on the side Patrick Ta always does two cream eyeshadows in his palettes at least for the First two palettes so far in this third one. I don't know if that will change moving forward but it's such a pretty palette. So we have a row of like warmer shades and then a row of more cool tone neutral shades. And then the creams are a dark brown and a black. So this palette I was really excited about. I wanted to get it. When I saw Patrick Tom mention it on his Instagram page, I was like, oh my God. And when I saw the swatches that he did, I was like, oh my God. I decluttered Major Dimension 1 because I really didn't like the formulation of those eyeshadows as much, especially the shimmers. And there were a lot of shimmers in there. I just didn't like the textures. But the few mattes that were in the palette were really beautiful and I liked them, but not enough to keep it around because I had Major Dimension 2, which this one has more pinky hues, more mauve tones, and then these shimmers are much better. They're much smoother and it's, it's beautiful. So if you see the mattes in Major Dimension 3 versus 2, no repeat shades here at all. Nothing is a crossover. And if you had all these shades in one palette, that's like a full neutral palette. What more would you need, right? So yeah, these are warmer mauves and then we have warm shades, warm tone shades and cool tone shades. So I'm really excited about this palette. All right, let's talk about the really bad story. Well, why the I know you guys are probably like, oh my God, why, she, why isn't she devastated? Here's the thing, I did not grow up with my father. My parents separated when I was 18 months old. So I never knew my father as a father, right? And I, I try to explain this to people all the time. They're like, how do you feel? Calm down, everybody relax. I'm not that sentimental type of person. I'm not just over here, oh, I have daddy issues. Relax, everybody calm down. They separated when I was 18. I don't think they got divorced officially until I was like 10 or 11, something like late, later in life. Never grew up with my father. In fact, I barely saw my father. The last like memory of like being with my father was when I was probably like, I was probably six and we'd spent like a couple of weeks in the summer with him. And I remember like going to the beach and like riding around on my bicycles, but I don't remember him particularly because it was me and my two brothers. I just remember me and my brothers enjoying the summer together, which makes sense because he was still working, right? So it would have been me and my brothers just enjoying the summer. So I don't remember any interactions with him at that age. And then after that, I didn't see my father again until I was well into high school so we're talking 14 i saw him one time he came and like spent the night he had some business in the area he came spent the night 
it wasn't really anything memorable. I don't remember much. And then he visited my school another time. And then after that, I never saw him again until my grandmother passed away. He came to the funeral. So that's the, oh, and then when I went to Jamaica with my ex-husband, we'd gone and visited him. So you see how I'm literally counting out the times. So apart from the summer when I was six, right? Then I saw him when I was like maybe 12, 13, then 14, and then 20, what age did my grandmother pass away? Like 23, and then like 20, probably 29. And I haven't seen him since then. That's the extent of my relationship with my father. You get what I'm saying? So I don't have that connection, that emotional connection where I'm like, oh my God, you know, my dad passed away. Let's use the brown cream eyeshadow. This is such an awkward thing. And it's, it's, it's weird because my, you know, my mom just called me to tell me this in the middle of me filming. And now I'm just like, well, I guess, I guess. So let's just use the dark brown on the, the outer V here. And I'm using a Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. And we're just going to kind of just blend it a little bit across. And I'm very lightly blending this. So the Patrick Ta Cream Eyeshadows are very light. They're very thin. So they blend out pretty nicely. They're nothing like the Merit Eyeshadow though. Because the Merit Eyeshadow is more matte. And I feel like the Patrick Ta ones are a little bit more... Not glowy or dewy, but they don't set down completely to like a dry matte like the Merit one does. The Merit one is definitely like a full-on dry matte. So if you have oily eyelids, these might be ideal. But I don't know if you have dry eyelids, if they're the best. But really, when I applied it, it felt like a silicone slippy thing. So it didn't tug. So... Like, I have to play around somewhere. I might get another shade. Now that I've used it on my eyes and not just on the back of my hand, like, it's definitely given a different feel. On the back of my hand, I could not get this eyeshadow off. Like, I was scrubbing with the makeup remover. You know, the one that they... That's kind of cheap, though. The one that they give you at Sephora so you can use. Um, Let's go in... Uh, let's try out as many shades as we can. So let's go in with a warm shade. Fundamental. So that's the middle, like, warmer one. That's like a beige. They pick up very intensely on a brush, okay? They are... I wouldn't say they're powdery, but they are more loose than tightly packed, right? They're not pressed hard. So if you just tap, on the eyeshadow, you're going to pick up a lot of powder. So don't, like, go roughing it up, you know? It's not as loose as, say, uh, ABH eyeshadow where they just go flying everywhere. But you will pick up, like, a decent amount of powder. And I'm just kind of windshield wiper washing that in the crease. So, yeah, I didn't know my dad, right? And my dad is also older. He's... Um, what did my mom say? 81. So he's older. He's not like really, really old, but he's older, you know, and he was sick. He had prostate cancer back in the day and he's just been deteriorating and he was losing weight. He wasn't eating and he got to a point where he just didn't want to, you know, continue. And you know, when older people get to that point where they're sick and they're just like, leave me alone. D-A-N-R, do not resuscitate. Like, I don't want to just continue doing this because they were talking about putting in a feeding tube. And this is since last week. So it was quick. That's what I'm saying. That applied really well. I know... All right. I feel like this is going to be a weird video because it's like I'm talking about the death of my father, but then also applying eyeshadow and talking about it. So this may feel like I'm a little detached and maybe I'm just processing it right now because like I literally heard this. But like last night I was over at my mom's house and my sister called me. So yeah, you're like a sister. So my dad has one, two, three, three daughters before he got married to my mom. And we, he had three kids with my mom. So me, two, to my two brothers, right? And then after they, they divorced, he married another woman and that became his replacement family. So he had two more kids. He had a girl and a boy. So, you know, he did that whole thing. So that was his replacement family. Yeah. I didn't see him. He didn't visit me. He was raising another woman, her kids, because she had three kids, and then 
his too, right? Whatever. The point is, I have older half-sisters. So my oldest sister lives in Jamaica, and she lives in Montego Bay, because that's where my father lives. So let's go in. You know what? I feel like using the next warm shade, which is gonna be what? Let's see. How are these laid out? So let me navigate this. So this is non-negotiable. This is impressive. So three over here is actually crucial. So this shade that we used was crucial. And now I'm gonna use Kneaded, all right? Same brush, which is just a Sonia Kashuk crease brush. So I never knew my father, and my oldest sister now, she was in Montego Bay, so she had him around her entire life, right? She's she's an adult, like, she's in her 50s. She has, she has a grandkid. She has three kids. I was the mini bridesmaid in her wedding, like, you know. So I pretty much know her, but we, we're not close. Like, we're not tight. Because she's older than me, right? So we don't have a lot in common. And that's the thing. Like, the, the older daughters, one was in England. We just found out about her. I asked my dad about it. I was like, so how you never tell me so there's another, like, another sister? Like, what's going on, right? He's like, oh, you know. And my dad is like that. He's very, well, was like that. He's very, like... And I'll just say in present tense, he's very like, oh, Tina, you know, and he's not very talkative. He, you know, he doesn't really say too much. And I've spoken to, to him throughout the years. It's not that I didn't talk to him, but, you know, I never really saw him and I never formed a bond. I, oh, these are applying so beautifully. I never formed that bond, you know. My other siblings did though, because my brothers knew him as a dad. They lived with him growing up because they're older than me. They're six and four years older than me. So really and truly, they separated from my dad when they were like eight, nine. That's the oldest one. The summer we went down, I would have been six. So he was even older then. But like they knew him as a father, right? And then the middle one would have been like five or six. So they knew him and they kept the relationship. But I didn't see him. And I mean, with boys, I guess you keep more of a relationship. All right, let's go into this deep brown on the cool tone side. So this one here is probably going to be irreplaceable. I'm pointing to it. You know the drill. So they knew him. My oldest sister knew him. And then the second older one... She also knew him, right? And my mom even had that second one for a few years um, while growing up. I know, like, it's a whole situation. But my mom actually, like, boarded my second sister. So my brothers know that sister as well as a sister, you know? Because they were all living in, you know, peace, glory, and all these things. So they lived together, they were a big happy family. I came into the picture and then it was just kaput. Is it my fault? Can you imagine? It was my fault. No, my dad was a rake. He was a womanizer child. He was in these streets doing street things, right? Cheated on my mom so much. So, you know, they separated, whatever. These are applying so well. Oh my God, they are matching my expectations. They really are. Oh, I'm using the Patrick Ta, what pen, what brush is this? Four contour, three brush. This is so nice. Like, look how these are applying and just blending seamlessly. These are so effortless. I just knew it. I knew it that he would do like a full on matte palette so well. Oh my God, please do another. Like, please, please, please do another. So they grew up like that but i was probably the only one that was really separate and uh, like distant from the situation so the first two kids they knew him my brothers knew him and then this third kid that we just found out about come to find out she also lived with him so i was the only one that was like not a part of his life and he didn't make an effort to like really build a relationship and i don't know that he was that type anyway he's just very blah right and let's go in i feel like i want to use this lighter beige now so this one is gonna be i believe that's classic all right so the last two like i said after like he separated from my mom he got married again and these kids are younger so 
I think the youngest one is 21, maybe 22. I know the daughter that I don't really consider them siblings, if I'm honest. Truly, truly, because I don't know them like that. But I mean, they are. They are siblings, I guess, you know, half siblings. But those two are still like early 20s, right? So they grew up with him. They know him as their dad. They grew up in, like, he's had the same house all these years, all these decades. So I'm 40, by the way. So that shows you the age gap, right? So he knows these kids like that. They know him as a dad. I don't, you know? So that's where the separation comes in. And then, oops, this mirror. So when people are asking me like, so what do you feel like? How do you feel like? I, I, he's older. He was sick. It wasn't a surprise. I mean, he was sick for a while. He's been sick for about a year now. He's just been deteriorating. And then I got the, like, the news, like, a, maybe, like, two weeks ago now. Maybe three. Maybe. No, I think it's, like, two and a half weeks that he was steadily declining. Like, he got really thin because he wasn't eating. He wasn't taking care of himself. So it was just a matter of time. And then I spoke to him. Was it yesterday? No, the day before. So I spoke to him on Saturday. My sister was at the hospital, so she called and he was just incoherent. He was mumbling. I'm going to use a little bit of the black. This is a BK202 brush. I'm going to use a touch of the black. And the black is going to be irreplaceable. I can't keep these names straight, child. So I spoke to him and he was just incoherent, right? He was just mumbling. I spoke to him like the day, but he knew it was me because he was like, Tina, he said my name. So I know he knew it was me and I was just like, you know, daddy, rest now. It's fine. You know, you're tired. And he was telling them, like, leave him alone. Don't, <laughs> he don't want no parts. And my grandmother did the same thing when she was dying. She was sick and she was like, fluid was building up on her lungs. And they could have done like other things to prolong her life. But at that point, it's like, you've given up. You don't want to fight anymore. You're not that young. You've lived your life. And he was divorced at this point because the other, the last wife left him. Let's use the slightest shade now on the warmer side, which is going to be mandatory. So you know how they say when people get older and they're alone, like loneliness is killing people. And he was alone. Like the old, the youngest son, the last kid was living at the house, but like he didn't care. Like he wasn't doing anything. And then the youngest daughter, she was away. She's away in Canada at college. Like, again, I don't have a relationship with these people. I just know it now. <laughs> you know, I know the information now just because this has happened, right? But she was away. The ex-wife is away. And it's just like he didn't have anything else, you know, going. And he was sick. And he didn't go to the doctor. Like, this has been a while. And so... He just passed away. Yesterday, my sister called me and she's like, he's completely like not talking. He's out of it. Like, they don't know what's going to happen, but he's not talking. So Saturday, he was almost incoherent, like barely saying anything. I could barely hear him. Hold on. I'm just so bad at like time in my lighting. But yeah, so he went from talking on Friday, you know, barely talking, but talking. I'm using my... L'Oreal primer, the mattifying primer. He went from talking on Friday to barely talking on Saturday to completely out of it on Sunday. And then he passed away today. I expected it. Like me and my brother were talking about it, the, the older brother, my older brother. And I was like, he's not gonna make it. He's not gonna make it past this week. I don't, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen. So we were like, are we going to, like, what are we doing with the funeral? Like trying to figure that out because he, he's supposed to have an insurance policy that covers his burial and everything. So I don't think we have to worry about that. But like, you know, we were just talking about it. And <laughs> um, somebody was like, so how do you feel about it? And I'm like, I like, I am, I, <laughs> emotional person if I'm not connected to you 
you know, he's older, he was sick. And the way I look at death, maybe it's also the way I look at death. If you're sick, I don't want you to suffer. It makes no sense to prolong your life for what, you know? You're sick, you're not like living a good life, you're not healthy. He didn't want to go to a nursing home. Like you don't want to just be bedridden. It's not a good life to be living at that state, right? So to me, it's almost like preferred to just make your peace with it. And I know it sounds bad, but it's like make your peace and just, you know, go where you're going and, and, and get yourself out of the suffering. Because I'm sure he was in pain and he was suffering he wasn't eating so it was just a matter of time let's go in with, let's go in with foundation this is the dior capture total serum foundation i have the shade 5n beautiful little packaging it's cute it's sexy and this is a super potent perfecting age defying okay broad spectrum spf 20 it's a whole thing right I don't want to look at all the ingredients but this is a serum foundation it's not gonna be heavy duty heavy weight and that's fine by me let me just grab a Anissa foundation brush and 5n matches me usually I am what's my shade match It's 4.5 right they don't have a 4.5 they have a 4 and then they have a 5 and 5 matches me well so let's just apply that so he was just at that state like it's life is over for him and he made it his peace and you know i don't again i don't think you should force life i'm a believer in medically assisted suicide if people are in pain if they're terminally ill and they want to just call it you know and go ahead and be medically you know medically assisted suicide if they, if they want to just go ahead and, and call it, I think people should have that right, you know? They don't have to just hang on because you think, you know, life is so precious and yeah, everybody is entitled. Yeah, you're entitled to life and you should want to live as long as you can. But if you're suffering and you can't take it and you don't see a way out, like being sick and terminally ill and you you know that the future is just going to be more pain, more suffering, I don't... I don't see a problem with it and when my grandmother chose that because she was sick she was at home and they were like oh we're gonna take you to the hospital she's like no leave me I want to stay home I that's it I don't want to go to the hospital I don't want them to string me up on tubes and IVs and like let me go I lived a long life I am content, I've made peace, I've seen all my grandkids, I've seen all my kids. Because with my grandmother, we all went to visit her that year, right? I actually went to see her in September, she passed away in November. And the last person to see her was my cousin, and he went, I think in late October, yeah, in late October to see her, and then she passed away in November 16th. So she made peace and she held out to see everybody like you know say her last goodbyes and i feel like that's my dad like i was probably the last one to speak to him on on saturday you know and he made peace with it because everybody else had spoken to him but i didn't get a chance to speak to him because my sister would have to like have her phone and she went to the hospital to talk to him so I'm not saying he waited for me, but you know what I mean? Like, I feel like he was at peace with just going. And so he passed away today. And it's sad. And I will probably be headed to Jamaica for his funeral. And I'll probably get to meet some siblings. Imagine that. It will be, it would be, yeah, my first time meeting his last two kids. And then the... I think she's not even the third daughter. I think she's the second one. So I know the oldest one, and I know the one that should have been second, but apparently she's third now. So I know those two. And then of course my brothers. So I'll meet the second older sister, the old, the second oldest. This is my Fenty concealer. And then um, the two youngest. So, yeah, it is what it is. And you know what's funny? 
like I know what they look like, right? So no, I met the the um the son. I met him. So when me and who did I go? Yeah, me and my ex went to Jamaica. I'd met the son. I'd seen the son. Yeah, I did. And yeah, I'd seen my my niece too. Oh, they're so grown. Cause remember, I was young when they were born. I think I was five, maybe six. No, I was probably seven. Yes, yeah, seven-ish when my first niece was born from my oldest sister. So I saw them and I saw the ba the the baby, my nephew. <laughs> and it's funny cause my nieces are older than my dad's last two kids. But anyway, I saw them. So I did see the son, but I never met the last daughter, which we, I know we look alike. Cause I look like my dad. Like the more I see it, I look more like my dad. And that last daughter, we look alike, but she, I think she's like a darker complexion. And remember my mom is Indian, so I'm mixed. So I'm brown and black. She's just full on 100% black. So she looks like just a darker version of me with like different hair, you know, but we look alike, we look alike, but her eyes are like further apart. So I don't know if you know this, but I have wide set eyes. <laughs> I can kind of look a little bit like Sid from Ice Age. I know that's like terrible, right? But I kind of look like Sid from Ice Age just a little bit. And it's cool, like I don't have a problem with that. Like no one can come and like made me feel bad about it. I'm going to use the Dior powder too. This is the Dior Forever Cushion Powder in the shade Deep. It's so cute, right? So I know we look alike. The sun, that's the only kid that I saw that I was like, I don't know. And you know Jamaican women, I don't know if you know this, but Jamaicans have the highest rate of, we we'll call it, um, paternity disputes. In other words, Jamaica has the highest rate of false paternity. Women saying, oh, this is your kid, but it's really not your kid. This powder has a cooling effect to it. It has a little mesh, so I'm picking it up on my Smashbox brush. It's supposed to be mattifying, but it's also like a cooling powder. So it feels like a gel water-based powder. It's really interesting. And it's a nice little color. So the shade I have is deep, which is the deepest shade, which is stupid as hell, but you know what it is. These, these luxury lines and this Dior, this Dior offshoot, which is the Dior Forever. This is the luxury side of Dior, not like the Dior backstage line, which is more inclusive. Anyway, <sighs> neither here nor there, but um, let me just say, oh, so that, so Jamaica has like the highest percentage of women that claim that this kid belongs to this man, but a lie. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll call it jacket. So when I saw this kid, like you couldn't tell me that this kid wasn't a whole jacket. I don't believe and I still don't believe, what should I use for my um, bronzer? I haven't used my Charlotte Tilbury in a while. Let's use this. So you can't tell me, said the son, the last son, that in my jacket. You can't tell me nothing. In my jacket. He looks nothing like my dad. Nothing. And my two brothers look all like, I have a picture from, ooh, I picked up too much. Eee. This is the shade. Which shade is this now? Tan. And this brush is from Sonia G and it's the jumbo base brush. Ooh, yeah, I picked up too, too much on the brush, but let me just blend it out. Cause the great thing about this cream bronzer is that it blends out really easily. It's light. Oh, I think it overheats and it's just like, girl, not doing it with you. So my two brothers, I have this picture from my grandmother's funeral. Remember I said my dad came to see us. So we took a picture and my two brothers next to him Oh, they look like carbon copies with a uh, Indian mix. That's what it looks like for real though. And then even me next to him, I look like him. You can see the resemblance, you know? And I feel like you don't necessarily see the resemblance just looking straight on. But when you see everybody next to each other, you can see it. So that kid don't look nothing like my father. I'm a don't believe is Fiend Pitney. But the daughter, so I'm going to use the... Patrick Ta Contour 3 brush now because it has a little contour side. Look, 
You see, isn't that cute? But it's like a little angled fan brush. So you're meant to use it to contour, right? Which actually works out. So you remember how I said my eyes are wide set? Because my nose bridge is hella wide, right? <laughs> and I don't have a problem with it. Like people try to, oh, your nose is big, okay. Fight me. Like what I, what I have to do with me and you, like that not change nothing. It don't change nothing. And I feel like my face wouldn't look the same with a smaller nose anyway so let me let me apply that but now i gotta blend it out because now it looks crazy so i sincerely don't believe that kid is his but that is not my not my zoo not my monkey because he raised this kid so at the end of the day you raise the kid as your own is kind of yours now so um they're gonna fight over property because his house is there so they'll probably fight over, I'm not fighting. I don't want nothing. Like literally, I don't want anything. The thing about it though, in the divorce with my mom, that house was supposed to go to us um, from his first marriage. I don't know where the paperwork is for that. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm not, I'm not fighting over property. And his former, she's, they're divorced now, right? So the last ex-wife, so not my mom, but the, the second one that he had married, she is just, auto, she's already like, oh, where's the will? Where's the title for the house? Where's the this? Like, she's already all over it about money. And it's just like, nasty behavior. You don't even met the man dead good yet. Because she was already asking about this before. Because we like anticipated this, right? But like, how you just so gravelicious? You don't even met the man, but it's tough for cool and you there worried about like property like that's nasty nasty behavior but you know you live your life a certain way my father was not like he didn't live the best i mean look at that he didn't even pay attention to his other kids after he got this woman like i said that was his replacement family and i don't have feelings about it if i'm honest with you because i feel like my life turned out pretty well without him so it's like i don't know that having him in it would have been you know much better and i don't have too many regrets like if you don't want to be a, a part of my life i'm not gonna try to force it you know i'm not gonna try to force a relationship and like i said he wasn't that type and i don't feel like i missed out i had uncles and i had like good male influences so i don't feel like i truly truly missed out and i don't know what the relationship would have been if he was around so you can't really say you missed out or didn't miss out you know it's just like different for everybody and everybody's situation is a little bit different so i don't know what it would have been like to have a father i didn't even have a mother <laughs> so my mom wasn't around and you know it could have been the same situation as with my mom she wasn't there like physically but we still had conversations on the phone and then when i grew up and came to america that's when i started like really building a relationship with my mom and now me and my mom are close so he could have had the same setup but he chose the way he chose you know and there's no recovering really he ch i guess he started trying like when I was later on in my 30s. But like how do you build a relationship then, you know? And like I said, he wasn't really that type anyway to like get emotional on the phone. And I'm not the emotional type either. <laughs> being Jamaican and also being a Capricorn. I'm going to chalk it up to that because people believe in signs and stuff like that, right? I don't know. I just grew up that way. I learned to like, I guess, compartmentalize my emotions. I don't let emotions lead me. You know, I'm a very logical thinker, and that's why I'm an engineer, right? All right, let me go. Should we do, I think I'm going to do lashes, but this eyeshadow, oh my god, I look. Blended out so well, applied so effortlessly, like, so nice. So nice, I really like it. I like it a whole lot. Let me go fix up myself, but come walk up on the road, you know. I want to go on the road, because I probably want to get... One more. Oh, I didn't even do blush. Let's do some blush. I'm gonna use do. Mm, let me use. Let me continue to use this 
note blush uh, this is don't even okay this is so discontinued i don't even know if this brand still exists but it's such a good blush and i fell in love with it i think it was from boxycharm and i fell is boxycharm even still around i think they were bought by ipsy weren't they what happened with that i don't know i don't keep up i don't care i really don't care anymore i'm at the step point in my makeup life that i don't care about these things but it's such a good little like it's so easy effortless it's still a pretty color but it's not like overwhelming so all right let me go do something to my hair and i'll be back to do like a lip and stuff i'll probably put lashes on too so i'll be right back all right we're back and i did add lashes that's it i feel kind of cute i feel a little bit cute not like you know outlandishly cute but like simple easy right refreshed and stuff all right um let's do a lip so i just spoke to my brother <laughs> and i was mentioning to him like how am i supposed to feel you know and we have the same like i guess you would say feeling towards it is that he was sick and at the end of the day he didn't want to go home and oh Lipstick got on my teeth. He didn't want to go to a nursing home. He wanted to go home. And he wasn't eating. His throat was in pain, apparently. So I think my dad just gave up. This lip might be a little bit too dark. So this is a viral lip color. It's from YSL. It's the shade... Oh my god, there's a name to it. So this is the Voluped Candy Glaze. I'm going to tell you the shit. It's Scenic Brown. Apparently... It's a viral shade because it's this beautiful brown color and it works great as a nude on deeper skin tone. But I feel like to get the real effect for my lips, because this just looks a little bit too rich, I'm going to go in with my gloss from Juvia's Place. This is their coffee shop lip glosses. The shade is Creme de Cacao. This is a little oh, peachy. Like a peachy, a light creamy peach, right? It's not really pink, it's creamy beige, like a creamy peachy beige. A nice shade to do that lighter center to your lips and it's also glossy. So I'll just pop that on the center. You see how it just, oh my God. These glosses from Juvia's Place are so excellent. I love them so much. Oh my god, did you pick these up during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale? I told y'all to. They're so good and they work so well with this ombre look. Because you see how I added it to the center? But then the outer edges are still rich and deep. Mm-hmm. They're so good. And they have deeper shades too, so you can layer it. So I can bring in salted caramel and add to the outer edge and get that brown mixed in so good and they smell like i would say it's like a coffee candy do you know like those soft toffee chews that have a coffee flavor that's what it smells like really delicious so yeah there you go here's the thing so i was talking to my brother about like the funeral like how he feels and he's like yeah we don't have hold on need some lotion for my hands he's like yeah we don't have that connection even he is not like devastated and i mean again we're very he's an engineer too so we're very pragmatic we're very logical with our thinking so it's more like he was sick he was suffering he's now at peace like he's resting but we we're just talking about like the funeral because we have a family trip planned for um when is it september 22nd to the 25th we're just spending a weekend at the atlantis in bahamas so we have a trip planned and we're just like we're gonna need to let them know that the funeral you gotta probably do it at the end of the month right or early october in jamaica funerals move very slowly so you're gonna need to push it out because we can't change that trip everything's paid for and it's like multiple people are coming and we don't want to miss the funeral you know it's like it's interesting but oh my god this video took a turn in the middle of it i really didn't expect that i didn't know what we were going to talk about and lo and behold look what happened so 
there you have it. I guess I could have just not filmed, but like, <laughs> I didn't know where to go with it. Hopefully it wasn't like depressing at all for you guys, but you can get a little bit of insight into me <laughs> and my family dynamic, right? You learned a little bit more about me today. So there you have it. And again, please, 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 I'm begging you right now to keep, I appreciate your condolences because I know that's gonna be the top comment. I appreciate it, thank you so much, okay? I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. But can we not like make it about that? But also that's difficult to say, don't make it about that, right? I don't know, I don't know, but here you have it. This is the final look, okay, there we go. The eyeshadow, like I said, I love how, like, how smooth, like, look how airbrushed and smooth that blend is. I mean, I can blend, okay? But look how, like, just smooth the eyeshadows look, right? And that's owing to the formula. Nothing stark, everything blended really easily together. Nothing's chalky looking, there's no patchiness, like, everything layered so well. I'm so impressed. I'm so in love. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is gonna be one of my favorite palettes and it's gonna probably end up being a travel palette for me because this is so stunning. It's so good. The foundation? Oh, I didn't even... I was... Yeah, see, I didn't even talk about the foundation. So the foundation. Great match. It is a serum foundation, so it does feel more hydrating than like mattifying right it is more like a skincare rich foundation but at the same time it doesn't feel sticky or heavy or too emollient you know what you get from a serum foundation and i did get like a light medium coverage it wasn't like a full medium coverage it didn't blank out everything but you see it evened out my skin really nicely it feels good like it feels comfortable but I can still feel it, so it's not like lightweight, ultra lightweight. And then I had to go in with concealer in like, you know, the spots that I needed more coverage. But it melted into my skin, the finish is beautiful, and the powder set everything in place without looking cakey. I just love the finish on my skin between the foundation and the powder. I can't see the foundation. Again, it doesn't look heavy. It just looks nice, but I don't think it's the most long wearing foundation either because it's kind of creasing a little bit in my lines, but it looks good on the skin, right? I really like how it looks. So those are like the newest things I tried. We also tried this new moisturizer from Kiehl's, which I like. Again, it's the soft cream and it looks good. It layered well with like my foundation and everything. I think my skin looks good and it feels comfortable. Like my skin does not feel heavy. My oils haven't popped through even though I'm using a serum foundation. So, so far so good. Thumbs up. The lipstick, like I said, I love this color. I think it will be great for you if you have deeper skin and you have like darker lips. This is such a good color. But you can do like me and do an ombre with it as well. It's such a comfortable, cushy formula. I love these little Volupt Shine and Volupt Candy glazes from YSL. I think it's such a cute formula. It's like a creamy, really balmy lipstick. It's almost like a stick gloss, kind of like the Makeup by Mario Bombs, but it's not as slippery and it's not as melty and it's really comfortable, so I love these little lipsticks, but this color, I think, is viral for a reason. I think it's great for deeper skin, but again, you can kind of ombre it with a lighter shade in the center, like I did with the Juvia's Place lip glosses, and these, highly recommend. So there you have it. This is the final look. I am headed out. I think I'm gonna go to Ulta and pick up my yeah there's something on sale that I oh the light the lighting one I know I'm caving and getting it because I kind of want to see what it does I'm getting older so I want to see what that light therapy is all about that little one got such rave reviews that I'm like all right I'm gonna try it out if I don't like it then I'll return it we'll see how it goes and yeah there you have it I'll probably go to Sephora as well and pick up a couple more shades of the Merit little what are they called solo shadow cream pots this actually applied a lot better than I expected it didn't tug it didn't feel dry and I do like the shade so I feel like I want to get a couple more of the shades of this it applied a lot better than I expected 
removing it's gonna be a different question i will let you know in the description box or the comments how the removal went because like i said removing it on the back of my hand was a task and a half it was like scrubbing at it to get it off but the powder eyeshadows from patrick tall layered well over that without getting cakey or crepey it kind of smoothed out my lids it covered any like discoloration it gave me an even like an even canvas to start with so I like it, it does dry down quickly, but it applied smoothly. So there you have it, that's it, that's it. I'm done talking. I'm gonna leave a full list of all the products mentioned and used down below in the description box, along with links on where you can pick them up. If there is an asterisk next to any of those links, that indicates that it is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through any of those links. It's a great way to show you support for the channel because it doesn't change the sale price, it just gives me a kickback for you using my links. So if you're shopping online, please consider shopping through my links. It helps me again to put right back into the content. So I really appreciate your support. And thank you to the members of the channel. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for subscribing, for joining the memberships, which is like a tip jar where you give me a little, you know, a little token of your appreciation. I also have super thanks. And I know a lot of you have been using the super thanks. So thank you again so, so much. Again, I appreciate it. And I will leave links to my Instagram and Twitter, which will never be X and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.